Oh boy. Okay, this is when it gets good. Before we jump into it, I want you to remember, it might sound scary, you might be going, this is the time to pause. We're setting you up to scale. Think about this. When was the last time you were able to go like, I really want to grow my business? What did that mean? You had to open up multiple locations. Here, we're adding dollars to a budget. That's a difference. There is going to need to be a structure. There is a foundation that you need to build for yourself. And we're going to talk through that right here. We have four brands and you'll be able to relate to at least one of them because all of them are spending at different levels and needing different attentions for their account and brand as a whole. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so what you guys are looking at now is we're looking at our account overview tab. We're at our forest view. And what it's gonna give us to, it's look at it as like your diagnostics account, right? What is my business? What is going on? Where do I need to make my changes? Now, it's a trend matter. We're understanding, trying to see where we're trending at. As you can see, we've had our peaks and valleys with this brand specifically, and we're excited to know that it's, for the most part, it's on the uptick, as you can see down here to the right. But there are days where it drops out of nowhere. That's just the name of the game, but I'm understanding that the longer run is where it's all about. So if I were to go down, I can understand a little bit of where my metrics are. So as you, as you can already see, I have my correlation exp export. Now I have multiple views depending on what I'm trying to prove, what I'm trying to show, or who I need to communicate with. My overall view, and I'll walk through this one by one. This is my dashboard at the top level. Why I like to look at the account overview is because if I were to go into breakdown, go by day, slide on over to the left, hit that up arrow, it's gonna give me my day-to-day -day improvements. Now, why I think this is important when I'm communicating with my team or brands is there might be a correlation, there might be a trend on specific days that you're seeing higher performance. One for us that we like to highlight, people get paid on a two-week basis. So we, are, we start to see that every two weeks we get a nice little weekend bump, because guess what, everybody got paid, now they're gonna buy stuff that they don't necessarily need on social media. As we scroll down, there's a couple of wins, a couple of losses, but what allowed me to understand is the beginning is this brand, without me knowing, they made a change on the price points. Well, why is that a huge issue for me? Well, as we started spending more dollars, we were, ex we were excited. Things were going good, people were patting each other on the back. We hit a thousand bucks in spend at a 2.2X when our target is a 1.6, understanding the margins of where your business is. And we started saying, this is great, nothing's wrong. And out of nowhere, Thing, the, the, the wagon falls off the wheels. And why did it happen? We kept trying, we kept testing, kept launching new stuff, and it was, for me, a big issue. But as we talked to the brand, we soon found out that they made a change on price point. A change on price point might not seem like a big deal, but when Facebook has been optimized to bring you specific types of leads, specific type of consumers that are converting at an average rate between 1.7 and a 2.5 on cold traffic, the reason why that's important to highlight is because you are convincing someone to get away from their normal day on social, right? You log in, I wanna see my friends, and you put a, a product in front of them. For this, sheets and bedding. I don't wake up and ever go, I need to buy some sheets today. It's okay, most people don't. But if I'm able to give them enough attraction, if I'm able to stop them uh, quick enough, I'll be able to get a review. Well, the major issue that we're looking at here is people are making changes without communicating to the greater team. So I was able to identify that here know that there was a poor correlation at checkout and make a change. As we move away from the account overview, let me navigate off of day. And I'm going to log into my overview tab. And I really wanna talk about how I'm looking at my dashboard. So again, this drop me all the way to the ads, I'm gonna navigate back up to the campaign level. At the campaign level, you're gonna notice that I already have a lot of my naming conventions. Why naming conventions are important is because if I needed to look at a specific part of the funnel, I could do it easily. I can do it quickly and I am able to communicate it to my team. For this, I want to understand cold traffic. So I'm going to type into the top bar and you might notice that my dashboard might look a little bit different. I do have the upgraded dashboard. I didn't ask for it. Facebook blessed me with it one day. Uh, and so you should have a similar, which is not too different. You just don't have the top bar for, for, for filters and you probably should have a drop down very close to it. So if I just wanna look at prospecting, a simple hit of the button props that up. 
And let's get into like what I'm trying to measure here. And this is how I look at my dashboard because at a quick view, I would need to be able to give my team direction or the brand direction. So let's go into my columns. As you already see, I named it myself. Customize columns. And here it is from top to bottom, which you'll see across my dashboard left to right. You have the ad account name. How much you're spending and the budget that's left. Somebody that nobody really includes is, is our link. Link to me is very, very important. So we can understand where that ad is linking to. Where are we dropping them at? What is the second place they're gonna go? Lastly, purchase conversion value. Pur purchase conversion value, make sure you uncheck all three of these boxes because what it's gonna do is it's gonna include all of them. It's just gonna extend it unnecessarily. La purchase ROAS, return on ad spend. The only number I care about, the only number that you're gonna be caring about, of course. Cost per unique purchase. You're gonna start seeing that I have a lot more uniques involved. Uh, and why I do this is because there is times where Facebook might misreport. There is times where Facebook's gonna overcompensate and overclaim that they're producing more sales than they actually are. It's okay. So to mitigate that, we use unique in case the pixel fires twice, but it's actually just one purchase. More often, we're starting, we're seeing that unique is more closely to what is actually happening in your Shopify store or whatever you're using. Going down that funnel is unique purchases, cost per unique checkout. And as you can see, I'm starting to build up my flow. Unique, uh, unique checkouts, cost per unique added carts, unique added carts, cost per unique landing view, unique landing view. Our CTR, which we want specifically link click through, um, CPC, cost per click of course, and CPM to see who we're delivering to. How does that look at on our dashboard? Going left to right, I'm able to see at a glance how much I've spent and what my budget currently is. Then to see exactly how much we've made. Walking through ROAS purchase, we're able to start seeing some specifics around how much it's gonna cost for us to push that consumer down the funnel. So if I knew and I didn't even look at what my ROAS is gonna be, and I was excluding looking at, again, we're only looking at ROAS on uh, prospecting specific creative. What we're seeing is an average cost per cart is about $19. So what this tells me and what the other people on my team should understand is if there are carts that are beginning to be more expensive than the average, $20, $23, $24, the higher it gets, the deeper the funnel metrics need to look better or else it's a decision that we need to cut. Well, Nick, how do we make those decisions? Let me show you. I'll set up my correlation dashboard and I'll explain to you very clearly. And I'm excited to say that we will be providing you guys this calculator because who doesn't love a good calculator? Coming through. So what we've been able to do is, here's my setup. Correlation export, that's the name. And you'll see on the tab that I'm about to click into, it's already kind of set up for you. All you need to do is match it on up. Cool. We've already talked about a couple of these things, so I won't spend too much time here. This is what I want to use. So I'm going to go into breakdown. You can see what, I'm, we're, what we're noticing is Facebook's not allowing me to, to export this. So what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get a little bit of a refresh and see if, oh, there you are. Export table data, export as a CSV, plain and simple. Cool, and just for good measure, we're gonna make sure that we do it at the bottom of the funnel. I'm gonna get rid of all my exclusions Filter by spend. Stay with me here. This is this is super important, okay? And I understand that you're like, okay, I'm, I'm done looking at the ads manager. If we don't look here, you're not gonna know where to build, you're not gonna know what to make, and you're not gonna know how to optimize. So stay tuned, I promise. So again, we'll go back into our export, coming over here, boom. Export that table data. Keep it as a CSV, plain and simple. Facebook's gonna do its thing. Why I think this is so important that people aren't doing enough of this is because they're afraid. They don't know where to look at. They think it's good enough. They think it's doing enough. Something is working, but what is working? If you don't know what to measure, you don't know how to improve it. So again, don't shy away from it. Lean into it. Lean into it, understand it, ask questions in the group. And what we're gonna do, it's gonna populate for me right here. Beautiful. When I'm, I'm gonna scroll over, I'm gonna click through a different tab real quick. And here you go, plain and simple, nice and beautiful view. And when we share it with you, you'll understand how simple it is to use as well. 
So only steps that we have to go through is make sure you line up your dashboard, navigate to the ad level, click export, export table data. I'm not going to do it again. Export as a CSV. Boom. Plain and simple. We're going to load up our account. And here's the dashboard. So all we're going to do, we already have our numbers. I'm going to go into their ad name, command shift all the way across, command shift down all the way down, command C, line up at the ad level, and you're going to watch over here as correlations populate. Paste special, paste values. Almost like magic, right? Now, if you're not getting pumped up on seeing what you're looking at, then you are in the wrong place. And here's where I care about this. Now, again, this is not, uh, labeled for you to, to no touchy or to touchy, okay? So if we're going to touch, this is all we're looking at. This is our success metrics. And again, this is dynamic, depending on what you need for your business. I know we need to be about 1.6 on Facebook to know that in Shopify, we're above our success metric and we can continue to spend. So here's why this is important. When I'm looking at my ad account, sometimes if we're spending a nominal amount, uh, we don't necessarily understand when to make that cut because things might look good on the click level. I'm here to tell you cost per click and CTR aren't necessarily the largest indicators of whether this ad's gonna work. Because think about it. If you're gonna make a click, you're gonna go to the website, you're gonna shop around, you have to click another four more times to go from a uh, home page to a collection page, collection to a product page, product page, to the checkout funnel. There's too many steps too far away for you to actually be confident enough that you are correct, uh, targeting the right consumer. So where do we make all of our decisions? Cost per add to cart. Cost per add to cart is, latest, is the earliest, deepest metric that you can make your decisions on whether to turn the ad off or turn the ad on. The further we get into this when we start talking about our prospecting, I'll give you a little bit of a framework for you to understand how much dollars you should spend at the prospecting level. So back to our document and see a correlation between uh, 0.5 is whether it's significant enough to make a decision or not make a decision. As we move down, we're starting to see why this is really important. Are there correlations between a click or an added cart? What about a click to initiate checkout and the further we go down? The metrics that mean the most to me and something that we like to highlight and as we export this, we do this every seven days. So on a weekly basis, this is something for us to take note of, to take inventory to understand is this conversion rate from cart to purchase, click to cart, improving or not improving? That is where we put our attention to. Now you can get really, really, I guess you say hacky if you wanted to segment prospecting and then re-engagement and remarketing. But for this, we need general direction so we know where to build and we know where to fix. Here's the biggest thing that we need to be focusing upon. We know that if we want to get a 1.6, we need to have our CPA similar to be a sub 80 bucks because we know our AOV is so high. Well, what about initiate checkouts? That needs to be a sub 40 bucks. Now I'm not going to be specific. I'm not going to be extremely romantic about it. it needs to be exactly on this because there is some subjectivity into this. There is some, some inferences that you need to make based on how much traffic is coming through. And there is a difference between some ads and I'm going to navigate inside for this. Some ads are spending a tremendous amount of dollars and not producing a lot of, of the, at the success metric that we want. That's not a problem because if it's producing a high volume of add to carts, if it's producing a high volume of initiate checkouts, and those are more cost effective and it can be able to be cleaned up in remarketing, that is where a lot of the wins could be had. So as you see here, we're understanding that a cost per purchase that we want to find success is far and above $69. That's way above where we need to be. That's 2.24. That's a win for us on this book. Now, what about sums that need to make a decision or need to be cut? Well, if this purchase at over $92, let's check back into our correlation document. It's a little too high, right? 79 bucks. That's where our target needs to be. So we click back into the ads manager. We killed that because although it's a 1.77 and it's above our 1.6 target, we couldn't confidently say that that was going to consistently produce the revenue that we want. 1.17 at a $92. Well, why was someone making a decision? Who was running the account that led them to believe that they need to let that continue to run? Well, let's look at our carts, $7.72. Thankfully, they made that cut based on the rust, but maybe they had an argument to keep it running. Let's see, 7.72. Jumping back in, well, it's under the limit, so that's why I made the first pass, $11. Check the next one. 
Let me switch into a different view to be a little more cleaner. There you are. Why views are so important? Add a cart, 14 bucks. Let's see where we're looking. Okay, it's a little higher than we wanted. Let's see a set of 37 at the initiate checkout. Okay, 24 bucks there, looks good to me. Didn't make that final decision cut. $79, are we there? Eh, it, made the, it didn't make the cut. That's why they, the decision was to get rid of it. These are the simplicity of uploading the sheet. And honestly, it does the media buying for you, which is unbelievable, in which you should be spending most of your time creating, finding new angles, finding new audiences, and finding new ways to sell your product. The founder mission is to help you create an ass-kicking business and help you learn straight from the mouths of world-class founders. Get your free printed edition of Founder Magazine featuring Sir Richard Branson. Just cover shipping and handling at founder.com forward slash Branson.